Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today I wanted to show you guys how to install RetroPie emulation station on your Raspberry Pi 1, your Raspberry Pi 2, your Raspberry Pi 3, or your Raspberry Pi 0. And I'm going to show you how to install the OS to the SD card. I'm going to show you how to set up your controller, and I'm going to show you how to add ROMs. Just to get a start so you can play some basic emulators on your Raspberry Pi. So first up, we're going to need to download the uh, RetroPie image. And we're going to go ahead and open up a browser window here. And all of these links will be in the description. You can go ahead and click on those from this video here and it'll take you on over. So first up, we need to get the RetroPie image for the Raspberry Pi unit that you're running. So we want to go to um, PetRockBlock.com. We're going to go here to where it says RetroPie Project and scroll down to Downloads. And depending on the um, Raspberry Pi you're using, you will download one of these images. It tells you here this is for the Raspberry Pi 1 or the Raspberry Pi 0. This one here is for the Raspberry Pi 2 or, and the Raspberry Pi 3. So I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3. I went ahead and downloaded this. We'll go ahead and we want to download the standard version. As you can see, it started downloading here. So about close to one gigabyte. I've already downloaded it and placed it on a, in a folder on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Next up, we're going to need... Win32 Disk Imager. This will allow you to write the RetroPie image to the SD card that you're going to place into your Raspberry Pi. Now, this is a very safe software. I've been using it for years. Go ahead and click this link here to download. Uh, it takes a few seconds to download. It'll take seconds to install, and you definitely need this. And then one last thing I suggest you get is SD card formatter. Now you will only need this after you flash your card using Win32 Disk Imager. If you ever want to use your card for something else, let's say you're done messing around with your Raspberry Pi, you want to use your SD card in a laptop or even your Android phone, it will only show up as 52 megabytes after you install a image using Win32 Disk Imager. So SD card formatter will allow you to restore the SD card to factory settings. And you go ahead and just download it from here. And it's very self-explanatory. We'll go ahead and exit out of both of these. All the links will be in the description. I'm going to cancel my download because I already have it placed in a folder named Pi3 on my desktop. Now it comes as a zipped image. I'm going to go ahead and extract this and I'll fast forward it for you guys. Okay, now that I have extracted the image, it will be in a folder. It'll be RetroPie version 3.6. And I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, so this is the image I need. This image is for the Raspberry Pi 2 or the Raspberry Pi 3. After you unzip it, it's uh, 2.5 gigabytes. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here and open up Win32 Disk Imager. Now, you want to make sure that your device that you're flashing to is your SD card. Now my SD card is my E drive and I named it SD card. It usually chooses the correct removable storage, but just double check that. You can do that by opening up a browser window here. And as you can see, SD card is my drive E. Now you want to click on this little blue folder here. And you want to go ahead and go to the folder you extracted your RetroPie to. Double click on the image, disk image file. And we're going to go ahead and write it to the SD card. Now this will take a second, depending on how fast your SD card is. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this also for you guys.
Okay, so the image was flashed successfully to the SD card. Okay, so the image was flashed successfully to the SD card. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plug in all of our peripherals. Like, I'm using a wired Xbox 360 controller. I'm using Ethernet and... I have a wireless keyboard also that I'm going to plug in, and then we'll plug in the power. And I'm recording with an Elgato HD60, so we're going to be right up on the screen, 1080p. I'll show you guys how to set up the controller and also install your ROMs that you want to use. I'll show you how to install them through a USB stick and over network storage. Okay, so this is the first boot. It's going to do a um, file size expansion front end. And we'll go ahead and set up the controller and get some ROMs on this baby. Like I said before, this is a Raspberry Pi 3 and I am using a wired Xbox 360 controller so as you can see it has detected my gamepad and all you need to do is go ahead and hold the A button and set up the controller now this is pretty much self-explanatory follow the prompts and you should have no problem so this is the D-pad Start select A, B, X, Y, left button, left bottom trigger button, right bottom, left top, right top. Now this is the left thumbstick only, so you're going to press in on the left thumbstick. You're going to press in on the right thumbstick. Now we're using the left analog, analog stick here. Up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. And we are good to go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and scroll through here. And as you can see, we don't have many uh, emulators right now. That's because we don't have any ROMs. Now, in order for, let's say, N64 to show up, we need to put some N64 ROMs on this unit. Same with PSP or SNES or NES. So, one of the easiest ways to install ROMs is to use a USB stick. Now, you're going to need a clean USB stick. It doesn't have to be clean, but I always use a clean one. And you want to make a folder on it named RetroPi. Then you want to plug the USB stick into the Raspberry Pi. Wait for the light to stop flashing. Then you can take that USB stick out, place it into your computer when you open up that retro pie folder that you created you will see a list of emulators um, then you take a corresponding ROM and place it within the right emulator folder so let's say you want to put SNES ROMs you grab some SNES ROMs and you drag them over to your SNES folder that was created now I'm gonna to go to the computer and I'm gonna show you how this works, okay? I'm back at the PC now. Um, I have a freshly formatted FAT32 uh, USB drive here. Now what we want to do is go ahead and create a new folder inside of your USB stick and name it RetroPi. Now that you have a RetroPi folder inside of the USB stick as you can see it's empty we want to take this USB stick out of the computer and place it into the Raspberry Pi while it's powered on and it will create two folders inside of here one will be named configs and the other will be named ROMs when you open up your ROMs folder you'll see a list of emulators so let's say you want an SNES ROM, you grab an SNES ROM and put it in the SNES emulator folder. Let's go ahead and do that now. 
I'm going to take the USB stick from the PC, place it into the Raspberry Pi, wait about 30 seconds, uh, depending on how fast your USB stick is. If you have a light on it, wait till it stops flashing. Then you can pull the USB stick from the Raspberry Pi and place it back into the computer and we can load some ROMs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I just put the USB stick into the Raspberry Pi while it's still powered on. The light is flashing, which means it's writing the new folders inside of the RetroPie folder we just created. And we're still flashing here. And it just finished flashing. I'm going to go ahead and pull the USB stick from the Raspberry Pi and place it back into this computer. Okay, so you see the folder that we created on the USB stick. Now it has a configs folder and a ROMs folder. So here's all your emulators that you can run on the Raspberry Pi using RetroPie Emulation Station. So I'm going to load a few ROMs on here. I have a bunch of my ROMs directory here. And let's go ahead and load some NES ROMs. We'll just take these and drag them over. Let's go ahead and do some SNES ROMs. Drag them into the USB stick. Let's go ahead and do some... What else do I have here? Game Boy Advanced. Mine as well. We'll go to our GBA folder. Okay, now while that's copying... In order to play certain emulators like the Game Boy Advance, you need a BIOS. And you need to load the BIOS over um, web storage, and I will show you guys how to do that in just a sec. But let's go ahead and go back to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to place the USB stick back into the Raspberry Pi. It will copy all the ROMs that we just loaded onto the USB stick. It will copy them to the SD card that you flashed your image to, and you'll be able to play some SNES and some NES right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Back at the Raspberry Pi. Like I said before, as you can see now, we don't have any SNES or NES um, emulator listed. So that USB stick we just made, let's go ahead and put it into the Raspberry Pi. And what this will do is copy it will copy all the ROMs that we just installed on the USB stick to the SD card of the Raspberry Pi. Now, like I said before, you ha best thing is to have a USB stick with a light on it so you can see when it's done copying everything. And mine seems to be done. I'm going to go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi one time, and we should have some more emulators listed on this front end here. So you press start on your controller. Go to quit. And restart system. As soon as my USB drive's done flashing, and there we go. We're going to restart the system now. Okay, that's the fresh reboot with the new ROMs. We have Game Boy Advance listed now. 
Nintendo Entertainment Center system and Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And as you can see, those are the ROMs that I copied to the USB stick. They are now installed into RetroPie, and you can go ahead and play them. So let's start a quick game real quick here. Just press A on your controller. And as you can see, we're running uh, SNES right now. The controller's already set up for most emulators out of the box when you set it up for the first boot on the Raspberry Pi. So like I said before, um, I'm actually going to make another video now about how to install ROMs over network and install your BIOS so you can play PlayStation 1, Game Boy Advance games, and Dreamcast games. So in order to exit a game, go ahead and press start and select on your controller to bring you right Guys, I appreciate you watching. If this helped you out at all, uh, if you could hit that like button and subscribe. Um, I try to make these easy. This one's getting a little long now. Sorry about that, but I'm sure you can figure it out. So I have another video coming up on how to load ROMs over network and how to load BIOSes. So thanks for watching.